Well, welcome to our online video for the 12th Sunday of the Trinity. I think that's right. Uh, we're here in church today in St Philip's. I'm going to start, as usual, with a, a bit of liturgy. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Also with you. And we stand before God knowing that we've done many things wrong in the last few days. So we say together these words of a confession. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, we admitted to having done some evil in a confession. We're going to be talking a bit more about good and evil, and the spiritual forces behind it, with Rev Trev a bit later on. Great is the darkness that covers the earth, oppression, injustice, and pain. Patient and sleeping in hopeless despair, though many have come in your name. Touched by the madness and love. Come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, pour out your spirit, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, pour out. Your spirit on us today. May now your church rise with power and love. This glorious God's will proclaim. In every nation, salvation will come to those who believe. In your name, help us bring light to the world, that we might speak your return. Come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, pour out your spirit, we pray. Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, pour out your spirit on us today. Great celebrations on that final day, when out of the heavens you come. At your throne, our great commission to be Then face to face we shall meet Come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus For our just spirit we pray Come, Lord Jesus, 
The reading is taken from St. Paul's letters to the Ephesians, chapter 6, reading verses 10 to 20. The Armour of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the armour of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given to me, that I may fiercely make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fiercely, as I should. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the verses of Scripture we have heard this morning, Paul urged all Christians to be equipped for spiritual warfare, making sure they can stand up to the devil and all his schemes. Paul encourages us with this rallying call to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. On the one hand, Paul wants us to be well aware of the enemy we face. But on the other, the other hand, he reminds us that we have the awesome resources of our God at our disposal, and therein lies our strength. I think we need to remind ourselves of verse 12 of Ephesians chapter 6, because I fear there will be many Christians who are sceptical of talk of the devil and his minions. Paul says this, our strength is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. When we were doing Alpha courses in this church a few years back, I was always struck by one particular interview in the session entitled How Can I Resist Evil? And this person being interviewed was asked about his faith. In reply he honestly suggested he wasn't sure about Jesus. But when it came to the devil he had no doubts, suggesting it was surely impossible not to believe in a personal force for evil, given that the devil advertised his work so widely and so frequently. I think we do need to be aware of the opposition we face. So Paul advises Christians to get armed for battle so that we are able to stand our ground and insisting that our own strength is not adequate. But when we draw our strength from the Lord, that is an entirely different matter. 
Paul uses a picture of a Roman soldier to describe the armour that is required. Note that there are six pieces of armour mentioned, five to be used defensively and just one offensively. We should also note that there is no armour for the back. That is because we're intended to be stepping out to fight for the Lord and not meant to be in retreat. So the call is to put on the full armour of God and to stand firm. Starting with the belt of truth, which holds everything else together. Every Christian life needs to be held together by the truth of God's word. Clearly, our defences are significantly weakened if we are not familiar with God's word. For example, if our knowledge of scripture is lacking, we may well struggle to lead a seeker to new life in Christ. And if we are unaware of God's promises to us, it may be all the harder to resist an attack of Satan in which we might be challenged as to whether we really are true Christians. Then Romans 8.35 could come to our rescue with these words, nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Most of us do face such challenges from time to time and lose confidence in our faith and we will need such reassurances from Scripture. Paul then turns to the breastplate of righteousness. Well, that's a piece of armour which will protect the major organs and is so clearly of great importance. We might regularly hear the Word of God. We might have good knowledge of the Word of God. But our hearts too need to be right towards God and towards others. Our effectiveness as ambassadors of Christ will be seriously damaged in our life if our lives don't match the gospel we proclaim. Then Paul turns to our feet. Foot soldiers need good footwear, that's obvious. Hard wearing and enabling them to stand firm on difficult terrain. The foot soldiers of Christ in the first century march far and wide with the gospel of peace, obedient to Christ's commands to go and make disciples of all nations. We are far more able today to, speak, to spread the gospel without walking for miles. However, Isaiah's words how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news, reminders of our responsibilities. Next, Paul tells us to take up the shield of faith, which is the first line of defence, extinguishing the flaming arrows of the evil one. We need such a shield to repel unexpected and sudden attacks. That's why Paul says later, always be alert. It is easy to be caught off guard, perhaps when we're feeling weary or troubled. Remembering and responding to Christ's call to lay down our burdens at his feet, that in itself is an act of faith, which can get us back on track and restore our peace. Finally, in our defence, we need the helmet of salvation. Now it's the mind which needs protection. Very often Satan's attacks start with the mind. We find our thinking is unworthy and that clearly distresses us. But however down we may feel, we can remember the hope that Christ has set before us. Even in the darkest places, his light will shine. Our hope is eternal. The last part of the armour is the sword of the Spirit. We've already noted how we can use God's word, which is the sword of the Spirit, defensively. But how do we use it offensively? 
Jesus' use of the scriptures when tempted in the wilderness by the devil left his enemy defeated and us encouraged. The writer to the Hebrews described the word of God as being alive and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. In David Watson's book, Hidden Warfare, written nearly 50 years ago, he concluded his comments on this passage of scripture with these words. As the army of the Lord marches into battle, it is perfectly equipped by God for protection and attack. Yet uniforms and weapons do not by themselves do the fighting. That is the soldier's responsibility. He must use what God has provided and use it prayerfully. Everlasting God, we come before you in this time of prayer to give you thanks for all you have done for us. We thank you for the cool of the morning, for the power of the sun, 
and for the beauty of our part of Staffordshire. Help us to be aware of your presence and hear your voice and make us always ready to obey and do your will. Pray for the church throughout the world and especially for our church here in Warrington and Wackley Rocks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we pray for our Chigo Deanery, Michael Lewis, the Rural Dean, and the Deanery Synod members. Help and guide us in decision making, especially where financial problems are concerned. We thank you for all those who serve you so diligently for the clergy, OLMs, curates and lay readers, for the church wardens and the PCCs, for everyone who contributes to running of services and fundraising events, and for all who attend worship and fellowship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the world, Creator God, we pray for our torn and fragmented world, wrestling to equate the deep yearning for peace with the instinctive urge for gratification and power, that many may have the courage to walk God's way. Give to world leaders and governments the wisdom and desire to make the right decisions and to work together for the good of all. We pray for the crisis in Afghanistan for the memories with families that have come to light again following those who have served in the country. Pray for Afghan refugees who are fearful and frightened and are desperate to escape the Taliban. Pray for those who have lost their lives and are still missing after the powerful earthquake in Haiti. Pray for the countries experiencing wildfires. Pray for those affected by the shooting in Plymouth. And please, Lord, let us pray for an end to terrorism, knife and gun crime, drug abuse. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the community, we give thanks that gems have started again, for Crossroads Cafe preparing to open again in September. Gracious God, we thank you for our family, friends and neighbours, and for those around us with whom we work and share our daily lives. Give us a true awareness that we all share your world with others and help us to make our homes welcoming places that reflect our Christian beliefs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, be with the brokenhearted and all whose spirits are crushed. Bless all who are facing difficult times ahead, all who are struggling to survive, all who are fearful and anxious. We pray for all who are in sickness and need your healing touch. Give thanks for the continuing rollout of the vaccine for the younger generation. Pray for all those with mental health problems, that they will seek the help that, that, that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we remember and thank you for the lives and example of those who have died in the faith of Christ and for the privilege of sharing our lives with them. Be with those who mourn and open their minds that they may find hope and the will to carry on despite the heaviness of heart they are now experiencing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, thank you for helping us to pray. Deepen our loving so that as we daily we pray through this coming week, we may do it with love and sincerity, ensure uncertain knowledge of your abiding presence. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen so as you go off into the rest of the week the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all evermore